Hi, I'm Hugh Jess, and today I will be joined by Mary Hinge, a feminist, and I will also be joined by Anita Fighting, an intelligent woman. We will get their opinion on certain subjects later. We will talk to Anita in a moment, but first let us say hello to Mary, hello Mary, and welcome. Hello Hugh, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to promote my latest book. Yet another book, I assume it is more feminist, drivel. Actually no, it is a book about animal welfare, specifically the panda. A book about pandas, so there is no feminist angle. None at all, it is a book about pandas, and it has absolutely no feminist angle whatsoever. I'm surprised, animal welfare seems like such a worthy cause for a feminist, I can't help but be suspicious. Well rest assured, it is about animal welfare, and has nothing to do with feminism at all. That is a relief, so what is the book called? It is called, She Didn't Get Those Black Eyes By Walking Into A Door, The Female Pandas Struggle With Domestic Violence. What is it about? Well my previous 452 books have covered the topic of women being victims extensively, now I want to ensure that female animals also have victim status. That sounds like a feminist angle to me. That is because you have issues with your mother Hugh. I think we should move on before I lose the will to live. Let us welcome our next guest. She is joining us on the telephone. She is an intelligent woman. Her name is Anita. Fighting. Hello Anita, and welcome. Hello Hugh, and thank you for having me as a guest. No problem, it will be good to get an intelligent response for once. I hear that. Will you two stop flirting and get on with the show? Why can't you be here Anita? Are you too ugly for the camera? Says the woman who looks like she stole her shoes off a dead clown. No, I am actually quite a stunner, but the maker of this video is too cheap to fork out for another avatar for this program. Cheap punk. What a cheap skate, typical man, he has a stupid name as well. I agree, what a douchebag. Okay, I simply want to ask you both about certain topics, and then get the feminist response from Mary, and then the intelligent response from Anita, do both of you understand? Yes. Yes. Okay then, let us get started, we will start with something simple. Do you believe women's studies are necessary in college, you first marry? Absolutely, and, not just because I would sell less books if they didn't exist, but because it is vital to learn about the importance of women, and it is also vital to teach women how to claim victim status. Women's studies will always attract the gullible, easily led moans from society, so it is important for feminists that they exist, otherwise it will be more difficult to spread our vile hatred. And you Anita, do you believe women's studies are necessary in college? No, history cannot and should not be whitewashed. Women's studies is just a heavily diluted history class where they cherry pick the parts that suit them in an attempt to show women as wonderful, but history is not always something to be proud of. We should learn the negatives as well as the positives, from Hitler to Gandhi, or from Stalin to Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, was he in the Matrix? No he was not, he was the civil rights leader from the 60s. You mean like that other guy, Malcolm the Tenth? It's Malcolm X. My god, you have got to be the whitest person I have ever met. We better move on before I go postal. What is your view on the fact that the majority of democratic governments are made up of mostly men? You first marry. Obviously a patriarchal conspiracy to hold women back, plus the fact that some men are dinosaurs who would never vote for a woman, making it virtually impossible for women to make it in politics. Thank you Mary, and you Anita, what is your view on the fact that the majority of democratic governments are made up of mostly men? A few things to consider, for a start, the number of men who choose a career in politics far outweigh the number of women who do so, also worthy of note, is that women make up 52% of the population, and are far more likely to vote than men, so it would be fair to suggest that it is women themselves who do not want women in politics, since they account for most votes cast. Another thing to consider is the fact that most female politicians repeatedly make it clear that they are only interested in women's needs, and what man is going to vote for a politician who disregards his existence, what women with men they love in their lives are going to vote for a woman who disregards all their male friends and relatives, in an attempt to gain gullible women's votes, I wouldn't vote for such a woman, because politicians are supposed to serve the people, not just one section of society. Sticking with politics. Some political parties use women-only shortlists in areas where they know they are guaranteed to get the majority of votes. This is to increase the number of women in their party. What do you think of women-only shortlists, Mary? I think it is about time. With the glass ceiling and lower pay to deal with, women need as much help as they can get. 
So what, if men are not allowed to run, once feminists are happy with the number of women in government, then we will allow men to run again. And you Anita, what do you think of women-only shortlists? I think if you filled a government with hardcore misogynists, they would not be able to come up with a policy that offends women more than the women-only shortlist policy, it is disrespectful, patronizing, and utterly offensive to all women, not only that, it is highly undemocratic, it suggests women cannot compete with men, it suggests political parties should be about appearance instead of ability, it is totally unfair to men. As a capable adult, I see no reason why a man should be prevented from competing with me, I am not a child, it is not a physical contest, he is not superior to me, so if he is removed for my benefit, it offends me. Thank you both. Now I would like you to tell me what you think of this. If a woman hits a man first, should he hit her back, Mary? I knew a man who was cornered by his wife, she attacked him with a nice pick, stabbing him in the head and neck 53 times, he pushed her out of the way, and ran to safety. Can you believe that, what a violent maniac, pushing his wife like that? He could have hurt her. He should have been a real man and walked away, or he could have sucked it up, it was only a woman attacking him, and women are a lot weaker than men. What a big baby. Like all men who physically defend themselves against a woman. Thank you Mary. Anita, if a woman hits a man first, should he hit her back? He certainly has every right to physically defend himself. I find it odd that in a physical fight between genders, it is always the man's behavior that is the center of focus, as if the woman has no responsibility to behave herself. It is always about how the man should behave. The simple fact is, every person has the right to physically defend themselves when they are physically attacked, regardless of gender, and in the situation you mention, the woman holds all the power over whether she gets her ass kicked or not. If she does not want a foot up her ass, then she should refrain from lashing out in the first place. Thank you. Now let me simply ask, should men respect women, Mary? Of course they should. We gave birth to them, we nurtured them, so they should respect women. If they don't have automatic respect for all women, then they obviously hate women, have issues with their mother, can get laid, etc., etc. And you Anita, do you think men should respect women? Only if they earn it, one of the reasons most women have turned out so utterly repulsive is because they assume they should be respected without having to earn it, so they behave in the most disgusting, undignified, grotesque vomit-inducing manner possible, because they are under no pressure to behave properly or with any decency, but if we taught girls that respect has to be earned just exactly the way we do with boys, then they may start to behave themselves, and if we are lucky, they may even start to show some dignity and honor, although don't hold your breath for that happening any time soon. I hear you on it. Now on to another topic, it has been suggested that women are sexualized in the media, what do you think of this, Mary? Of course they are, which is why one in four women end up raped, and why women end up being paid less. Men think women are nothing but sex objects, thanks to the way women are sexualized in nearly all forms of media. It is time for men to stop being attracted to the hot naked flesh of extremely attractive young women, they have every right to display their perfectly toned bodies if they wish, but if any man is attracted to them, then they are perverts. How about you Anita, do you think women are sexualized in the media? Absolutely, but they only have themselves to blame, you see. No one forces women to sing in a bikini and high heels in their music video, no one is forcing them to take their clothes off, no one is forcing them to display their flesh at every opportunity, all of these women are choosing to do these things, of course men are attracted to women, that is natural, but men are not responsible for how grown women dress or behave. So women being sexualized in the media is entirely their own doing, if they don't like it, then they should keep their bloody clothes on. True that. Well we have to end it there, I would like to thank my two guests, first Mary Hinge, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. And Anita Fighting, thank you for joining me. No problem, thank you and see you later. It's time to go, but first I would like to ask Mary. Can I smell your vagina? No you cannot. It must be your feet then. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>